If you use Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, or any other social media platform, then you probably already know that there is either an insight section or an analytics section built into the platform that you can use to your advantage. And today I want to help you to understand the Pinterest analytic platform. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Catherine, the creator of The Content Bug, and I am here to help you follow your passion by growing your audience online. And I've talked a lot about Pinterest here on my channel before, and today I wanna to dive deeper in and talk about the Pinterest analytic platform and how you can understand it and use it to your advantage. So I'm actually going to jump over to my computer and I'm going to walk you through my analytics and break it down step-by-step step on a, what each section is and what you need to be looking for so you can create content and use Pinterest to really drive traffic to your website. Let's get started. Before we even get started, I want to let you know that you need a Pinterest business account to get access to Pinterest analytics and Pinterest ads. So if you do not have a Pinterest business account, you're going to want to do the conversion right now, switch it from a personal account to a business account. Now, before we get started with this analytics section right up here, I actually want to talk to you guys about this little snippet here. So this is the first little analytic snippet that they give you. And this is just a breakdown of three things. It shows you how many pins you have, how many boards you have, and what is your monthly viewers. So I have over 14,000 pins that I have shared on my profile. I have 41 boards that I contribute to. So those are not just my boards. Those are also group boards as well. And then I have an average of a million monthly viewers every month. Now, another place you can start to check your analytics is right up here at your profile. So on the right hand side, you're going to notice a little bubble with your picture in it. You're going to click my profile. And this is your profile. They recently updated this as I am recording this. They updated it, I think, a week ago or something. So this is relatively new. But what you can do is check your follower count. So you're just going to click followers. This is how many followers you have. Click following. These are all the people that you follow. And if you go to your boards, you're obviously going to see all your boards. This was originally the place that it took you to begin with. Now they mix it up a little bit. And it shows you in every single board how many pins you have contributed to each of them. So that's a good place to start to sell so you can see what boards are most popular and what ones aren't as popular. Now let's really dive into the analytics. So we're going to click on analytics and just overview to start. This is an overview of your profile, meaning it breaks down. So if you hover over this analytics section, it breaks down into profile, people you reach, and website. You're going to notice that right here, this is your profile, people you reach, and your website. So this just breaks it down so you can look at all three of them at the exact same time if you wanted to. And it shows you the top pins that have gotten the most impressions from your profile. So these are not the ones on your website. These are not the pins that you are pinning directly from your domain. These are just pins that you have shared on your Pinterest profile. So obviously these are actually none of my own pins, but these are performing the best in the last 30 days. So if you look over this, these kind of give you just general information. And if you click on these, it will actually give you more. So we're gonna start with your Pinterest profile. Right now it's saying that my average daily impress impressions is 29,000 and my average daily viewers is 18,000. That's pretty good, but I really wanna look at what this curve is doing. So I'm just gonna click the more button. And here we are at your Pinterest profile. Now there are a few things you can do. When you pull it up, it's always going to go to impressions. You can click on saves, you can click on clicks, or you can click on all time. I typically go on impressions unless I am using specifically the pins that go to my domain, which I will talk about in a second. So this is just your profile. You can change the length right here. So it's automatically gonna do two weeks. You can change it to 30 days and see what's going on. So this curve is all over the place. And I kind of expect that honestly, because I'm at the point in my Pinterest scheme where things are kind of steady. I'm growing slowly, but I'm kind of just staying the same as well. So it's kind of all over the place. When I first got started, I started at the bottom and I worked my way up. Now I'm kind of just like up and down and I'm okay with that. So when you hover this over any of these, the first one is going to tell you, so 27,000 impressions and then the bottom number is 16,000 viewers. And what that means, because it's kind of complicated. So impressions, how many times it just appeared in general? It's not how many users saw it. So it appeared 27,000 times in general over the Pinterest platform, but only 16,000 people saw it. So that means that several of those people saw my profile multiple times. So that is the difference between viewers and impressions. That's how you understand that. 
Now we already saw this in the overview section. This is nothing new here, but what you can do is scroll down and see what boards are actually performing the best for you. So these are the boards that are performing the best for me. And four of these are my own boards. One of them is actually someone else's board. And that may sound kind of weird, but it's because they pin a lot of the same pins that I have pinned. So my profile is attached to their board and I am appearing a lot on that board. That is what that means over here. So this is just your Pinterest profile, your impressions, how many times you are appearing. Now, if we go over to people you reach, this is what a lot of people like to refer to. You know how on your website you talk about page views a lot. This is kind of what the same thing would be with Pinterest. So again, it popped up as 14 days. I'm going to move it. So this is currently my average um, monthly viewers and how many people were engaged. So let's say right here, I had 700,000 viewers. That's just an average. So that's not in one day. That is an average over the month. How many people see my pins? And then I have 27,000 that actually engaged with my pins or engaged with my profile in some way. That is all that that means right there. Now, if you want to, you can pay attention to this over here so you can see that my average monthly viewers is going down a little bit, but my average monthly engage is going up a little bit. I mean, if you break this out into a long scale, so let's say, let's go back to March and then let's go the whole way. We are in April. And you can see that it went up and it's going to go back down a little bit. I am around this 600 point most of the time, but you can look at your graph and make sure that you are going up and increasing. And this is really what a lot of people think of as their main focus point when it comes to their Pinterest analytics. But this section, this people you reach section is also amazing because it helps you to understand your audience. So if you scroll down a little bit, it breaks it down into four simple categories. So the country that your audience is, the metro, language, and gender. So this is pretty self-explanatory. This is the number of people in your audience that you are reaching in the United States, the language, this is how many people speak English. I mean, that is pretty obvious and self-explanatory there. If you want to look at this interest section, this is actually not my favorite section because I don't think it's that accurate. But you can look at this interest section and see what your audience is interested in. So my audience, this has not changed in probably a year which blows my mind, but this has not changed in over a year. And this is what it says that my audience is into, which I can kind of get because my audience is a lot of bloggers. So if they're into fashion and makeup and casual outfits, I understand that. Now, this is another interesting section. So this is boards. These are boards with a lot of your pins and it's not your own boards. These are other people's boards that have a lot of your pins. So these are some of the people that are pinning my pins a lot. This is where I'm located. And by looking at this, that's awesome because these are all things that I talk about, which means that my pins are getting placed in the appropriate boards, which is great. And then this is just an extra snippet of information. This really isn't that relevant in my opinion, but these are brands, so businesses that your audience also engages with. So if you're right a lot about brands, this could be very helpful for you because you can see, okay, my audience is really interested in Tumblr. I could write about Tumblr. So that's just a little snippet right there if you wanted to know that. The last section I want to talk to you guys about is your website section. And this is actually my favorite section personally. Compared to the people you reach, this is my favorite because it gives me the most information on what is going on with pins that directly relate to my website. So I'm going to break this out again to 30 days. And I want to show you guys some crazy stuff that is going on here. So I have been testing out Pinterest ads. And if you've been keeping up with me on my blog, I did a whole blog post about what ads are worth your money. And I will include that in the description bar down below. Um, but this right here, this big spike is because of an ad that I was running. And if we go down here, I want to explain this. So this little R means it is a rich pin. P means that it is a promoted pin. This is the first pin that was ever promoted for me. Actually, a company paid to promote this pin for me. I didn't pay to promote it, a company did that I work for as an affiliate, which is absolutely amazing. But they only ran the ad for, I think, two weeks to a month. I didn't really get the analytics from it because they just, they were very sweet of going out of their own way and doing that for me. Um, but they did that six or so months ago. And you can see this is still my most popular pin ever 
and it's not being promoted anymore. If it has a P beside it, it just means that it was promoted at one point in time. That is it. It doesn't mean that it's currently being promoted. It means that it was promoted once. So this pen has performed by far the best for me. And these are, so what I'm looking at right now, this section that we are in is the impressions. So this is going based on impressions here from top down. And these are top impressions from the last 30 days. So here are my top five pins that are performing the best. Now, what I want to tell you guys, because Pinterest is a little goofy, these two pins you'll notice are for the same blog post, but they're two separate pins because someone else must have pinned it off of something and created a brand new pin. So I wish that Pinterest had it all together and all the domain pins would be linked into one just major pin instead of having a thousand broken out, but that's just the way it is. So this is technically my top four best performing blog posts that have the most impressions on Pinterest. And if you want to see more, you can always click the show more button and more blog posts and stuff will pop up. This is another good example. So these are three of the exact same blog posts, but they're different pins. Um, so this will go based on impressions. You would see that it started with this high of a number and then it goes down into below the thousands. Um, so these are just the last 30 days. But what I want to show you guys is if you want to see clicks. So what pins are getting the most clicks that actually lead to your website? And if you look at your Google Analytics, you can probably see what blog posts are performing the best for you or what pins are performing the best for you based on where your traffic is. But if you want to see specifically from Pinterest, you just go to this clicks button and it's going to re-evaluate everything based on clicks. So before this was impressions right here, now it is clicks right here. And this is just showing you the, um, the most clicked pins from the last 30 days. And these, again, these are just two blog posts that are receiving the most clicks from me. Um, if you scroll down, you could see boards that get the most clicks. So these are some of the boards that have gotten the most clicks to my profile, or not to my profile, to my website domain. So that is pretty interesting to look at. You can also look at saves. So if you want to see what pins are getting the most repins, that is what this means, that you are getting that many repins for that one pin. And again, how many, bo what boards are getting the most saves for you. And then if you want to look at this all time option, this is one of my favorite options within Pinterest. So you can click on that all time. And what this shows you is not within the last 30 days. It's showing the whole life of all of your pins. What ones have the most saves? What ones perform the best in search? So how well your search engine optimization is really. And what ones are power pins? Meaning pins that have a max of high saves and clicks and are getting amazing results for you overall. So this is pretty interesting to see, okay, these pins have the best SEO. What do they do differently in these pins compared to some of the other ones that aren't performing as well? Or you could look at the topics and say that, okay, some of these, so this is website SEO for beginners, and this is how to SEO a blog post. These two are SEO related and they're performing well. So maybe SEO is a good topic that I would want to talk about more because it's performing well in search and I can get more traffic to me. Another one, when it comes to the saves, you can just kind of see what your audience likes and what they are saving and what is working that way. Power pins are pretty interesting because this, what is content marketing and why you need it, is actually not up here. It's not saying that it's performing best in search. It's not in the top 10, but it has a mix of good saves, clicks, and it's performing well in search. So it's kind of interesting to look at this. And if you ever want to look at more, you can click on show more and it will populate all of these. I think it's easier just to look at your top 10 because this honestly, it may pull up all of my blog posts almost because <laughs> it's insane. They give you so many options there, but this is a really great way to just understand, okay, what pins are actually working and what ones aren't. So this is from the activity on your website. Go to analytics website, whoop, analytics website, and that's going to show you that. Um, I think that is about it. That's all I really wanted to show you guys. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you back here in another video really soon. Bye guys.